it's just past six and we have a crazy evening ahead of us unplanned and we are super pumped for it i say just after six in alaska because it is the dark season so it's pitch black it's been dark for hours it's currently one degrees and we're headed to pick up a moose so we just got a call <laughs> we were arrows working on the computer i was making dinner and we got a call from the dispatch for the alaska state troopers and they wanted to know if we wanted to come pick up a roadkill moose thankfully it only took us i'm not joking like six minutes to get in the truck and leave the house we were already prepared to kind of pick up a moose because we just got back from caribou hunting yesterday so the trailer was hooked to the truck we've got two snow machines we've got our big red sled we've got recovery gear we've got knives i think we have everything to pick this moose up but you never know until you get there and unfortunately this one is kind of far away so i think it's over an hour like on gps and that's summer driving conditions it's winter right now so hour and a half maybe hopefully no one takes it before we get there so let's go We had to bring the dog because we were in such a hurry. We didn't have time to prepare the house for him. And unfortunately he doesn't travel very well. So he's uh, riding through all of these lovely bumps that we're going over. This is going to be our second time harvesting us actually picking up the moose, harvesting a moose from the roadkill list. Um, usually you go in on it with a team. So in the past we've been with our neighbor and they were able to get one when we were out of service. So that was really awesome. That was a few years ago. I never anticipate the call if you want to know the truth. Um, it's always just like really exciting and stressful at the same time. We've been driving for a little while, so my nerves are finally calming down now. We're excited that we're gonna be able to have some meat again in the freezer. It's been a little while since we have been able to have some moose meat, right? Yeah. We have fish, so we can't complain, of course, but we're happy to get the moose and we don't know what conditions it is in, so we'll find out. And the road is, the road is not too bad right now, which is good. Heated up to 19 degrees and I'm hungry because we didn't eat dinner. <laughs> Starving. No, I'm really, I'm hangry almost. I'm gonna have to eat some of the moose when we get there. Why do you eat the moose when we get there? I might. We're cooking right now though. Can't complain with that. We're on four wheel drive, but we're going pretty fast. Windy. Check my speed. Get a ticket. 21 degrees. Holy cow. Be out here in a t shirt. You just gotta no, like go super set the trip real quick. So you go slow now because I did see something no. back in the One point eight, right there. I just saw signs of an accident right there. Someone hit something right there. See right there that went off the road? Oh yeah, yeah. There it is. That's it, right there. Oh, that's right on the road. Is it a baby? Uh, it's a moose, that's for sure. It looks like maybe a baby. Uh, I can't tell. It looks really young. Or something like that. No, that's a full-size mom moose. It's not a baby. It's a full-size moose. It's not a baby. All right, we're gonna have to go up and turn around. That's what we're gonna have to do. So it looks like we found the moose. A lot of times these moose are hit on the highway. This one was actually hit on a back road, which is gonna be kind of nice because we're gonna have to park in the middle of the road with our flashers on. Right now we're trying to find a place to go turn around because it's on the other side of the road. So we can get it loaded and see if we can get it. It looks to be just like a, a mature cow moose. Not a baby, right? It's, it, it I don't think small. it was a baby. It was kind of twisted up. It, you know, I just saw her. I don't think that's, is that like a full-size female? Looks like it's me. Wow, she got hurt. And I've never seen a moose in this position. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous coat on it. Bunch of snow in here. Well, here's the plan. We need to get the moose onto this deck over trailer, which is about three feet off the ground we have ramps we have got our red sled which is awesome that moose man that's a big moose should fit in here and we've got two snow machines on here i don't know let's let's figure out how we're going to do this trying to get it on here in one piece keep it whole and get it out of here is really odd. yeah she got like really tangled up okay i think what we need to do is we need to flip this sled on oh her legs are underneath her yeah she's already like we could probably flip it up. So 
Eric's just packing down the snow. Um, hopefully we can flip the moose into the toboggan. I don't know where she got hit. One of her arms is, I can't see it. So usually you can tell where they got hit because they'll have broken bones. But we'll find that out, I guess, when we process her. But it's a good sized moose. I don't know where she got hit is what I was thinking. Maybe that other arm, maybe her butt. So if we put it like that. And then try to kick her up. Put the strap around her neck. Try to pull it over. Come yeah. on, you know. You should try to flip her off. Okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Hold on. Let's get, let's get her back in. Oh, why did I put her in? Tilt this. Okay, 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 okay. You got her in. You got her in. It's, uh, shoot. Well, I think we figured out what was going on. Um, she's she's got like a cut on her belly, but her left arm, her front left arm, leg, got hit. It's broken. So I don't know if maybe the troopers dispatched her or something like that. But she's in the she's in the uh, sled and. I just think it's kind of heavy. It may want to like topple. So we don't want that. Eric's going to try and see if he can find somewhere to pull up the machine and hopefully it all goes swell. So far things are going great. It's warm out here and it's a full size moose and it's not, not damaged too badly at all. Oh, it's slide, slide again. A little bit here. Okay. I'm officially hooked. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put in low gear. I'm going to try just bomb up that hill and get into the road. Oh gosh. And then pull in front of our truck. And you... then we'll have to take the truck and go in front of us and try to load her up. What do you think about maybe just tightening some straps? So, cause I feel like if this flops on us up there, there's no way we're gonna work. You know, we have the hail to work with us now. Well then if she gets, if we get her up that close, I can unhook the truck and pull her up into the road if we really need to. She's right, great. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is gonna... I didn't know if that was gonna work, it worked. Oh my God. You had major speed. I was doing a wheelie. You did a wheelie? Okay. Okay, now I gotta throw those ramps on and we gotta pull the truck directly in front of us. We'll load the snow machine up and hopefully winch it up. Okay. We finally got things figured out. Snow machines are on the front. The moose is gonna ride on the back. We're gonna try to pull it up on these two metal ramps. There's a small lip on the center of this sled on the bottom, a little metal ridge. We're hoping that rides up the center. We're gonna use a come along and a heavy duty ratchet strap. We're gonna have to do this in stages because the come along will only pull, I mean, this one's pretty long. This one's like 10 feet. So it's a two ton come along, I think. Let's see if it pulls the moose out. I get ratchet strap and I'll do the come along. on the sled the scandic and the come along and us we got it done oh kind of afraid she needs to be butchered she smells like a goat she's a sour patch kid
Slimy. It see this meat's good, so I can leave it when I get it cleaned up. I can leave it just attached to the bone. Might as well, right? No point in boning it out if we don't need to. Still, I think it's still pretty decent a chunk. I don't know. Can I tell you the truth? Sure. <laughs> I felt like. I felt like crying. I felt like it was sad because I feel like it's like, yeah, you're doing all this work and then it's just obviously not really. But I mean, I felt sad because of all the spoilage. Like we've never in our life had so much meat be spoiled. It's just, a, it was such a, it's crazy how much meat you can get from an animal this big and then it's so sad to see it all just be like just damaged and spoiled. Oh. Blood everywhere. Yeah, that's heavier because it not it hasn't been yet um cleaned up as much yet. Do you get what I'm saying? How I'm looking at how the blood is frozen. This is frozen blood, Eric. Oh, the icicles. Yeah, I was freezing out there. There's earlier. frozen blood icicles. Have you ever seen such a thing? What were you saying? Yeah, about an hour ago when it was starting to freeze out there. It's 4 a.m. and I feel like this is a really good example of salvaging a roadkill moose in Alaska. The first moose that Eric and I got this way, we were really fortunate. It had been clipped by a train and I know that sounds bad, but it actually just barely broke its pelvis and it was dispatched by someone who worked for the train or the trooper, I don't know. So that guy was in great condition. Um, and unfortunately, very sadly, this cow is in the exact opposite condition. Um, for the lack of a better word, she was pretty much obliterated. And we didn't really notice. We thought when we picked her up, you know, things looked a little suspicious. But it wasn't until we cut into the body cavity. The plan today was just to get the guts out. We're like, we're going to get the guts out and then we'll get some sleep and we'll quarter it out in the morning. Um, when we got into the cavity, we realized that... Her stomach had been, I mean, I'm pretty sure she was hit from the side, we think, and then she went bouncing. And so just every part of her got hit that you could imagine and her insides just blow, blew up inside of her. So we had the, the back bones were broken, her ribs were broken, the pelvis and the leg bones were broken. We haven't even gotten to the upper body, but we know that one of the arms is broken. It wasn't pretty, it's not pretty. So we're doing the best we can do and it's really hard because I just wanna like, normally, normally I wouldn't even like waste a chunk like this at all. But um, it's very dirty and some of it was like in the stomach fluids and there's a lot of blood in there. And I'll spare you the details, um, but it's it was messy and we're trying the best we can do. I think after this leg, we're probably gonna fall asleep. So we're gonna need to wait to do the top half until tomorrow, which should be fine. That top half I'm hoping is in better condition than what we've got going on here. <laughs> Well, this is the aftermath out here. It looks atrocious. Uh, we went to bed at 6 a.m. and we got up at 9 a.m. So we have had a lot of sleep. All of the meat that we've processed so far is outside. We've got some of it divvied up on the deck. So we have to keep a watchful eye on it because of the birds. But it was really cold last night. I think it dipped down to the negative. So the meat is definitely freezing up nicely. As you can tell, there's a bunch of frost on the rest of it. Vaughn's headed over right now to help us with this. If you've caught Vaughn and Ryan over on Wildwood Off Grid, they're amazing, lovely people, and they are team members for this moose. So we're sharing it with them. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can get the rest of it salvaged here. It looks pretty bad right now. I think I'm gonna have to, uh... he's, he's coming over here already. He's gonna steal me. He's gonna steal me, I guarantee it. Gar. Hey, no hey. Gar.
41 degrees in here. Okay, have fun. We're ready to go again this morning, so let's do it. We've got some of the scrap moose meat, the real nasty parts. Give it to the chickens, they're enjoying it. And they also got a pancake, because that's what we had for breakfast. Oh gosh, you got messed up. That side's bad. I it's thought. just insane to me. This side's not, uh, this side's the most, this is the only thing I said. This is the only side I was, <laughs> what did I just say? Uh, it's like not that piece. Good. It's like her stomach is in. Her, her stomach's up there too? Yeah, it's like through the, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Little damage here, but not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Well, it's literally where our, it's already out. I in see chunks. your own. <laughs> basically. Because it was like in it, it needed to be done. She was, um. I did bring the sawzall if you want to whack that off super fast. We got, mm. we got ours too. We were using Oh, like, okay. I'm trying to save every little bit of meat for us. For us and you guys. It was, um, every part of her body was broken. Thank you. I'm an official leg holder in our family. <laughs> Oh, I wow, mean, look at that. Jeez. The marrow's right there. Uh, later, right. You got that, the uh, other side is pretty clean. There's one. There you go. What's your white face? This much to the chickens, but at least they get to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, oh, there's some fat right there. I think getting towards the neck as yeah. well as the neck. Yeah, fat or tendons. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm so confused. We're on the, on the neck. neck. Yeah, we're going. Oh, we gotta get the neck. Yeah, the yeah. neck has it. There's good meat on the neck. I don't yeah. think the neck got hurt. We don't have to bring anything when we go hunting. <laughs> it was, we don't usually get anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nice knife, the knife. I love knife. it. We really like it. it goes yeah, like right here. Yes. That one, my mom found it at a garage sale. Really, it's very comfortable ago. in your hand. It's Cutco, so. Yeah. yeah. I feel like these blades fall over me better. The uh, raven showed up. Those are no. It's sitting in the tree. We've left organs out before, and a baldy goes flown off at the heart. Took a heart, yeah. Took a heart. It's all the I precious trash. I was just telling her. Only ones up there. We just did it. Like they just came through. That stinks. I yeah. love it when you get into them though, and then it's just like being in an epic movie that's your life. Uh, that's oh. and we would literally be sitting at the front door with open for like an hour. Like just like every every second we try to like make it. That's when we live together, yeah. It's like, all right, right yeah. well, yeah. you gotta go. We're all we the way start like around the car, eight. You know what yeah, I mean? leave by like nine ish. Yeah. You felt like kind of rude. I wanna go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I'm. I don't know, I gotta. I've been spending way too much time on this piece, but yeah, every time I think I'm done, I'm like, well, I better trim that off. Backstrap is one of the best parts of the moose, and unfortunately, this one, I don't know what happened. It like had a huge hole through it where the ribs broke, but when I was getting the neck meat off of it, I did find about a one foot section of the backstrap on one side. So these ladies are in here working, and I'm gonna cook them up some fried backstrap, <laughs> tenderizing it a little. turning it down so far. That's the thing. That's why I always like trying to get the piece of to burn out. Well, it's been 48 hours since we got the call and we are still chugging along working on this moose. Yesterday Vaughn was tremendously helpful and we got the carcass finalized and today Eric got that cleaned up out there. It was super fun having her over. We were cooking up moose all day yesterday and then now 
I am finishing off the bones. So even though we weren't able to harvest like the organs, um, I had wanted to harvest a lot of that. The cavity just wasn't in a good situation, but we are able to keep all of the bones from the quarters. We're gonna be using those later, but I have to get them cleaned up. Definitely have my work cut out for me tonight. And we have had a little bit of a recovery period this morning, we slept in. So I'm feeling just a lot better, really grateful for the moose, and I'm very excited for all the meat that's stacking up. And tomorrow we're gonna be um, doing the, the fun stuff. We've got the femur right here, and this is like the hip bone where this attaches, and it attaches with like a ligament. So you just cut it right there. That's part of the uh, pelvis. One bone down, four more to do. Wait, wait, I'm incorrect. I don't know my anatomy. Look, that's how she moves her knee. That's the kneecap. Good steak chunks in there. Oh yeah, we probably a bucket for that. So, yeah. I didn't even think about that. But, like this is way too thin to be. Okay, let's fire her up. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Folks, we are that much closer to getting this moose in the freezer. And when we got that moose call and we got home, we started cutting into that moose. We were not really intimidated, but we were kind of like worried on what we were actually gonna get off this moose. But I'm gonna say that Ariel saved the night that night and she just dived into that thing and she stayed up. We both stayed up till six in the morning getting this thing done. And we pretty much thought that we were gonna be grinding this whole entire moose into burger or ground sausage. But after we butchered the whole thing and we had it laid out on the deck, we realized that we did have quite a bit of good like roast meat, kind of like this one sitting right here. And something like this is just awesome to have in the freezer. So what we'll probably do with this is maybe cut it into two or three pieces and we'll wrap it all up, we'll get it in the freezer. And then when you pull it out, you can do anything with it. You can tenderize it, you can grind it if you want, you could cook it whole and you could do chunks. But what we have going on right now is the burger meat. So there's nothing wrong with burger meat. It's honestly like one of our favorite things to have. And we're gonna grind all the burger meat and sausage meat together. We're gonna go through our coarse grinder first, which is really kind of thick like this. And then it'll all go back through on like a fine grind. I mentioned we're gonna do sausage and we are, Ariel has about 15 pounds of pork fat she's had in the freezer for a special occasion. So we're gonna use about 10 pounds of pork fat. We're gonna make a sweet and spicy breakfast sausage. But I think next thing is just getting through all this meat. We ended up with quite a bit. So we gave our team members about 40 pounds, estimating that's all they wanted. And we ended up with about 100 pounds, I believe. So we have a 65 quart cooler and it is completely stuffed of meat. We upgraded to a new grinder about a year ago. Our old one that we had for about eight years broke. So we got the same brand of grinder. This is a Cabela's brand grinder. We just got the bigger one. So this is a half horsepower and it is just eating through this meat. We got our work cut out for it. We're gonna continue on and grind up our burger. bucket is almost full. I'm thinking, feel it real quick. I think it's 36 pounds. 50. Is it? No, it's no way. 36. Right? <laughs> right? Ready. Let's see if I can hold it. Oh, I was really 31. Really? It feels a lot heavier when I hold it. Minus the bucket, so it's probably 30 pounds of ground meat. Switching over to the pork fat, which looks like this just beautiful white fat. So we got this from a butcher a while ago and we're gonna do 30 
maybe like 32 to 35 pounds of the ground moose meat and we're gonna do 10 pounds of the pork fat and that is gonna make up our sausage. Let's see how this stuff grinds. <laughs> Jerky. Oh my gosh. Look, look, at this, so look at those jerky. slices. You could, this is a great one if you were to ever do a whole quad for corned beef. It's too big of a chunk to work with. See, so there's only one freaking muscle. Look at that. That's amazing. There you go. Just meat. Just meat. Just meat. Oh, oh, it's all coming. It's all coming out. And this is 10 pounds of fat. It's the fun stuff. So we're finally mixing up our sausage, a little over 30 pounds of moose meat, 10 pounds of the ground pork fat, and we're gonna add our spices. Wide variety sausage you can do any way. I don't know, for some reason I was like, let's do a sweet, spicy breakfast sausage. That way we can eat for breakfast or we could eat it for dinner. And that's what we're gonna do here. So the sweet part is gonna be brown sugar. What size are these bags? 32 ounces, so two pounds. We're gonna do, we'll start with this and see what happens. We're gonna do maple syrup. We'll probably put this whole thing of maple in there. You actually have to put a surprising amount of sweetness in sausage to get it to really come through when you're eating it. And that's a lot of meat there. So that's a little over 40 pounds. And then for spices, we're gonna use these chili peppers. I don't know what kind these are, but they're just like dried hot chili peppers that we have. And then Arrow went through last night and kind of cleaned out the cupboards. We had a bunch of spices that were just like a little bit left in the jar, stuff like that. Some of the herbs we're gonna use is coriander, dill, we got tarragon and fennel seed in there. More herbs we're gonna do, rosemary and sage. This is a, from the garden from a while ago. We've got a curry mix. We have pepper, salt, smoked paprika, cumin, and I think that's it. Let's start mixing this in. Brown sugar. We usually do a taste test after we mix. That's the best part. You know, I know I'm gonna do all this syrup, so all that's going in. A lot of cumin. This stuff's pretty good. This organic curry powder. We have never. That's pretty good stuff. The chili peppers, I'm gonna kind of just pop the stem off and crumble these in here. They're so dry. Oh, look at those seeds. We're gonna start there and we're mixing this in our ice chest because we don't have any totes left. So we're gonna get this mixed up as good as we can. And then we're gonna put it through the grinder again with the small plate and that's gonna give us like our finished sausage. And we're gonna try it at that point and see if we need to add anything. Really, that's one we were missing out on. Apparently that and fenugreek. What one? Fenugreek has a really good flavor too. I mean, okay. this is amazing, huh? Yeah, that's, a, that's extremely cold. You ready? Let's see how it grinds up this meat. Where are we putting it? Where's that big bucket? A five gallon bucket or? Yeah. We got one free? Yeah, we got one open, right? Look at that. That looks like, yeah. Oh, that's heavy. Ground sausage. How right? does this feel? This feels ridiculous. That feels like 10 pounds. Is it like hot? Is it gonna 
but I just tasted the fork. Oh, you already tasted it? Just the fork. What I think that? we're going to like it. Oh, good. Delicate. Because of the fat. It's really good. It's really good. I've, you can taste all the spice. You can taste all the sweetness. It's not spicy. So that's the only thing. Spicy or salt if you want more of that. You can definitely see. You see how you can taste the fennel. I didn't even put that much fennel in. Yeah, and it's so it's sweet. You can totally taste the sweetness. I really like it. I think maybe uh, you, it's not that you could put salt if you want, or you just put salt on when you're eating it. What about just maybe something like hotter? It's delicious. It tastes like a sweet breakfast sausage. I'm fine with it not being spicy. That's amazing. You only put on there is this. Oh, cayenne pepper. Ground cayenne. I'm not really getting any. I'm getting spices, but not hot. Sausage turned out awesome. All we did was add about, well, I don't know how much more, but we added some more cayenne peppers to the rest, like what, half of it? Maybe like a tablespoon of this really spicy cayenne Mix. powder that we have. So it should be a little spicier. And let's dump this in here. Let's get a final weight on the sausage and see how we did. And then it's time to bring in the burger meat. I think we got about 40 pounds of burger meat. We're gonna grind that through a second time and then it's on to packaging. Okay, I can't even lift it. 52. 50, 40, 40, 49? 50 pounds. 50 pounds. Minus the bucket, which I don't know how much that weighs, maybe a pound? Yeah, that's close so to So around me. 50 pounds of sausage, that's pretty awesome. Are and you lifting that like that? No, I almost, Cause it's like my one, back almost went. One little, oh my. <laughs> it feels like concrete. Oh yeah, this is like real. It's almost, feel that. It? It's like dry, it's I know. frozen. Okay, Bo, you get a very special meatball. You want me to go over a pound or a pound? A little over, okay. Oh, you're okay with that? Yeah, never do I open a sausage and I'm like, whoa, that's way too much sausage. You're right, this is sausage, this is not like burger meat. You just save it for the next meal or cook it all up? It's a particularly large one. Okay, guess what? End of the burger. Sausage is done and we've done a few different things with packaging our meat. We've done vacuum packing, which we still do. And we've done these game bags, which we like. We had about 25 of these left over, so we wanted to use those. But I think our favorite way of doing it that we have used is using plastic wrap like this. You take your piece of meat. These are a little bit over a pound. Put them in there and you kind of really push it down on it and it really sucks down against the meat. You do that. You take a piece of butcher paper. This is probably a little bit too big, but you'd use a piece of butcher paper. You start in the corner, you roll it. You put a piece of tape on it and that's ready for the freezer. And these are really nice because it keeps like the juices in there and it seems to keep it fresh for quite a long time. You don't get any freezer burn with this. So we're gonna finish wrapping these ones up. It's on to the burger meat. This takes a long time. What do you think? Big yeah. S on them maybe? Yeah, nice pack job, guys. A little mail package. Ooh, an S. Or even like a money. No. Okay. <laughs> what is this? Oh my gosh. I need 
two on that one. That's a big boy. Packaging all of our moose meat has made us pretty hungry. So we figured it would be very fitting to make some breakfast for dinner. We're gonna make some biscuits with some of the breakfast sausage and eggs. And the biscuits are really, really simple. We're using our secret ingredient, which is lard, to make them extra delicious. Let's get those in the oven. Well, here's what the finished product looks like. We're super excited. So we have sausage. We have 50 pounds. Burger meat, we have 40 pounds. And then the steaks or the roasts, we have 30 pounds. So that's 120 pounds of moose meat, including the 10 pounds of fat that we put in there. And Errol and I both agree for the condition of the moose. We're just super excited that we got this much meat from that animal. We've got obviously a lot of meat for the winter, which was just a complete shock and surprise for us. We're super grateful to have this. It's cold outside. This is all starting to freeze. We'll get it put away in the freezer. We're gonna head inside and finish it off with a delicious meal. Thank you. 